We are used to creating these beautiful places, national parks, the Yosemites, the Yellowstones, buying them and preserving them. But we could only do that so many times around the world. And so finding places like Staten, where you could have agriculture and also bird habitat, then it's, it's a win-win. And that's what we're looking for. The Delta is where all these rivers from the Central Valley come into and eventually go out under the Golden Gate Bridge. I like to say in the Delta, you're in the middle of nowhere, but like an hour from anywhere. And so this was a massive, vast wetland at some point. We've transformed this landscape to be a very productive agricultural landscape. For seven months out of the year, this place transforms from a very productive agricultural operation to an amazing mosaic of habitats. It's a magical place, and if you've ever been here in the evening, it's just gorgeous. It'll take your breath away. The waterbird species are just remarkable here. To see cranes is an emotional experience. It's not just an intellectual experience. They're just hauntingly beautiful. What you learn to love is what you learn to protect. Upstream, we have the Kasumnas River Preserve. And that really is a preserve in the traditional style. It has a visitor center, it has trails. Staten, it's a really a functioning farm. It's a 9,000 acre island that's un under single management and it's owned by the Nature Conservancy. Staten Island in the Central Valley of California is part of the Pacific Flyway. And so these birds are coming here in the winter after they've been in Alaska, Oregon, Washington, and so they overwinter here. That's what makes Staten Island so important to them. A place like Staten Island is a great example of where we're looking to get both wildlife benefit, but we also have a productive agricultural system. We give the birds the grain and they provide us with fertilizer. Corn, winter wheat, rice, all those things that are left out after harvest in the fields, the birds will then feed on. After we're done harvesting, we uh, do minimal post-harvest groundwork. We just chop the stubble and leave it. Traditionally, in the olden days, they used to disc the ground or plow the ground, but the biologists say that that's putting the seed under too far for the birds, so we just chop it and leave the seed on top of the ground. They also feed on invertebrates, so on the, the bugs that are found in the mud and in the shallowly flooded areas. The farmer's benefiting because they're flooding their corn in order to get decomposition for the following year. And at the same time, you're supporting thousands, tens of thousands of birds on that same property. Sandhill cranes are a very charismatic species. Getting out there and watching them dance in the morning, their behavior is really fun to see. They dance to help maintain their pair bonds, and they stay with that individual for the rest of their life. The Sandhill Crane Festival promotes understanding of cranes and the need to protect their environment. Our Crane Festival brings in more people to Lodi than any other event. Well, this year we had 51 tours that send people out to go see birds and animals all over this area. It's fun to stumble on something that's really unexpected. Staten Island is a living laboratory and we try to encourage as many different researchers as possible to utilize the property. This is really an exciting time to be in the Delta and part of Staten Island. But as we're able to see, even in our short lifetimes, the valley is changing a great deal. We really believe in doing the science that helps to tell us what are conservation solutions that are good today, but are also gonna be good 100 years from now.